How you doing, I'm Matt. Today I wanna to tell you five reasons why I chose to go with a saw stop for my garage workshop. This video is not sponsored, but I didn't buy it. Let me explain. On the live stream a few weeks ago, I actually said this. I aspire to get one myself at some point. Uh, I like my fingers. I had no idea that when I said that, I got off the live stream and was checking my emails 20, 30 minutes later, a brother in Christ sent me an email and said, here's the money for your new saw stop. It blew me away. I was speechless, mouth hung open. He bought me a saw stop. A lot of people don't understand and I don't understand why we keep getting things given to us because we've got a ton of tools in the shop and other things that we've been given. The blessings just keep coming and coming and coming. My only hope is that I'm able to return this at some point or I can return this somehow to someone else. Just paying it forward, paying it forward, paying it forward. That's the mission of the channel. This is something that I've wanted for an extremely long time. I understand it's outside a lot of people's budgets, but it is inside some people's budgets and it is a lot of people's dream saw. This is my dream saw. This is the one I've always wanted for a long, long time. However, with that being said, I chose this. He gave me the money. I could have bought any saw that I wanted on the market and I have been looking at all saws. I've looked at all models. Full disclosure, I reached out to a bunch of table saw companies looking for a deal for the channel and I couldn't reach an agreement with any of them. And it was not that it wasn't a decent deal. I just felt like it was way one-sided to the company and not to the channel and us. So I chose not to go with those deals. This was bought by a very good friend of mine, a brother of mine, a brother in Christ. And he done this out of the goodness of his heart, just wanted to be generous. He is not associated with any tool company, saw stop or otherwise. I actually built this workbench to be the exact height of a saw stop and I didn't know I was getting a saw stop at all. I actually went to saw stops website before I started building this workbench and went and found the height of the saw of what the saw would be and then built the workbench to be that height in expectation of getting a saw stop in a year or two. So the number one reason why I chose saw stop is it's going to be pretty obvious the safety feature of the saw this blade drops below the surface, stops immediately if it makes skin contact. I can't quantify enough how important that is to me and how many times that it happens to people over and over and over in the U just in the US on a daily basis. It's not that I'm not trying to be safe around my tools or trying to take safety as a top priority. Uh, I was a police officer for 13 years. I made thousands of traffic stops, thousands of them. 95, 98, 99% of them went exactly like I thought they were going to, but that one or 2%, it, it always happens when you least expect it, something's gonna happen and, and you're not ready for it because you get complacent. Same thing with the table saw or with any other tool in the shop, you get complacent. You cut 30 parts, 40, 50 parts a day, and then that 48th, 49th part you accidentally just brush your hand across the blade or you reach and grab, whatever the thing is, your mind just loses focus for just a split second. That's life changing. That's the number one reason why I wanted the saw stop and why I have always wanted the saw stop. Does it cost a premium to get that feature? Absolutely, but that's why I wanted the number one. The number two reason I chose saw stop, it's a quality piece of machinery. This is not a low quality machine. It is high quality. You can tell it from the instant it comes off the truck. Everything is packaged extremely well. Everything is extremely well laid out, even color-coded parts when you go to put everything together. Anything you need to adjust, whether that be the, the table to the blade or the fence, any of that stuff is in a spiral-bound, hard cardstock book. It's extremely well done. Like, that's just a little detail. The little details, they matter. So I was putting it together. I didn't have any trouble. I actually didn't find this book for a little bit and then it was in another box i had to open all the boxes so make sure you open all the boxes find the book once i found that book everything rocked right along so the only issue i had was trying to adjust the table to the blade because you have to actually move the table and the way that works is there's four screws there's two right under the front and there's two inside the uh, motor box there and what's frustrating about that is you have to take the clearance plate off and tilt the blade to a 30 degree angle and get up in there. Whoever designed that, man, come on. 
Y'all did everything else right. You didn't do that right. That's too hard to get to. I actually bruised my arm pretty good trying to get one of those bolts loose. Once you have all four loose, there's just a little tiny set screw on each side that adjusts the table frame. And it's easy to adjust once everything is loose, then you tighten everything back down and I got it perfectly dialed in. Other than that, the fence wasn't perfectly 90 degrees to the table. That's easily adjusted with one of these two little white screws here. And I cranked it maybe an eighth of a turn, moved it perfectly square. And that's one of the things you want on a table saw is to be able to dial it in and for it to be a precision piece of equipment. That's what it's for. You need to be able to cut exactly square, exactly straight every single time and it not come out of alignment easily. The number three reason I chose this saw stop is that, three horsepower. Now, this is a 240 volt saw. You can get a 120 volt saw, 110, whatever they call it. Uh, the one that plugs into regular plugins it's a 1.75 horsepower. That likely would have been enough power for me and my shop, but I wanted the three horsepower and I wanted the 240 volt for the power. I'm getting into more hardwood builds and I wanted the power and this thing sings through hardwood. When you turn it on, it's like a race car firing up. Woo! Yeah. So yes, I did have to have 240 run in the shop, so that costs a little bit more to have the electrician come and I actually had him hold the camera while I made the first cut. So thank you, Mr. Scott, for doing that. I've got it raised up right now on the wheels on the uh, mobile base, but it's still solid. It doesn't vibrate, it doesn't shake. Whew. Since we're talking about the base, I upgraded and got the industrial mobile base. Uh, basically it has four wheels all the way around it. It has this hydraulic jack that lowers and raises it with the foot pedals. It, is easy, easy, easy. The flooring I use in my shop, these are horse stall mats. You can buy them at your tractor supply stores. It moves extremely easy. I've got one hand on this thing, moving it around. If you're gonna get the base, a mobile base, I recommend that one because they are nice. The number four reason I bought this specific saw is the fence. I've said it many times before when I was talking about my Delta saw, which I think my Delta was probably the saw to get in the $600 price range. That thing is so nice that because the fence system is square and it remains square. If you have a table saw and the fence system does not remain square or you can't square it up, it's junk, it's no good. So for the fence system, it locks down extremely easy. It operates much like my Delta. It was also a T-square fence. In other words, it has these little runners plus the fence. I think this is a superior way to make a fence. Everything stays square, it runs in this track. This is a metal tube, so it's not gonna bend or twist or anything like that. It locks down with the press of the handle, it unlocks just pulling it up. This thing here is easily adjustable, so if you switch blades with different curves and you can adjust this, just loosen these screws off and move that left or right to get it dialed in perfectly. If you needed to take it off for whatever reason, you just pick it straight up, it comes right off, and then it does sets right back down in there the exact same way. It doesn't matter what it costs, it doesn't matter what kind of features it has on it, if the fence can't be squared up and remain square and cut square every time, it's useless. But this one is an awesome fence system. I've got the 36 inch rip fence, which allows me 36 inches of rip capacity to the right side of the blade. On my Delta, it had 30 inches of rip and I was always needing 32, 33, 34. I understand I'll hit limitations at 36. I actually wanted the 52 rip fence, but I have no space in here for that. It's nice to have, but it's one of those trade-offs to where you have to decide if it's worth the sacrifice in space. This has already taken up a little bit more space than the Delta did. If anyone wants to know, the Delta was given away locally to a woodworker, the same one that got the Delta miter saw. I tried to give it away on the live stream to three different people and three different people never came and got it. So we just gave it away locally and he actually uh, works for our church, so he'll be able to use it for the church too. Right after this number five reason, I'll actually tell you what I don't like about the saw is it's not a perfect machine, okay? It's just nothing is perfect. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. Saw stop's not perfect. Nobody, nothing's perfect. But the number five reason I chose the saw, it may be shocking to you, is the price. <laughs> you're like, what? <laughs> this dude's insane. They're very expensive machines. Absolutely, they are. Without the generosity of the man that bought this saw for 731, 
I wouldn't have it here today. It's not like this was in my budget right yet. I was wanting one. I've always aspired to get one at some point. I had no idea, zero idea that I was gonna get it this soon. Had it not been for him, I wouldn't have it. It wouldn't be sitting in the shop, and I understand that. I can't tell you how it makes me feel to be blessed with this stuff. I feel guilty, I feel blessed, I feel overwhelmed. It's just a flood of emotions when I think about stuff like this. I wanna cry about it, you know, I just do. It, <laughs> giving is a whole new level of feeling when you're able to give. $3,500 is what he gave me, and he said, Go get your saw stop, okay? So I could have taken that money and bought any other saw on the market. And I did peruse a little, okay? If you think about it, this saw is $3,500 for a three horsepower, 36 inch rip fence, professional cabinet saw. Others in this same rip fence, same horsepower, five to $800 is what you're gonna save, give or take. I couldn't justify five or $800, that's a lot of money. I understand that because that would buy you a Delta table saw, the 36725T2. However, if something happened and I cut a finger off or two or three or sliced a hand, the financial and emotional impact that would take for the rest of my life would be incomparable to the amount of money it takes to actually upgrade to get a saw stop. Rehab, medicine, surgeries, just the emotional toll it would take on you and the downtime it would take from being off from work or being able to produce videos and content and woodwork, I could not justify not spending it. It's, it's an investment in my health is the way I looked at it. If you don't want a saw stop, I don't have anything against you. I'm perfectly fine if you want a different brand, if you're loyal to a different brand, none of that bothers me a bit. I'm just telling you why I chose this saw. One thing that I don't like, I was actually disappointed by, was this extension wing. It's, it's wood and melamine or something on the top. It may last for years, I don't know, but everything else is cast iron and metal. Why are we making this out of wood? Weight, it can't be weight because you're only gonna add another, what, 50 pounds? It's minuscule amount. I'm sure it's a cost savings thing. There should be an option for this not to be wood. I, I feel like this will get damaged. I know you can replace them. They can always sell you another one but in 15, 20 years, are they gonna have a replacement for this? Probably not. Is it 15 or 20 years? Is this cast iron table still gonna be just like it is today if it's, if it's taken care of? Of course. Another thing I, I don't really care for are these legs that come down. They serve a purpose, but they, they feel kind of jinky to me. I can't complain too much about it, but I can a little. This miter gauge is just a basic, everyday miter gauge. Again, a premium product, and this isn't premium. It's just not. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. I got a free saw and I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you, if I bought this with my money and all of this stuff come in, these are the things I would have been disappointed with. All things considered, we're paying a premium for the saw stop. Everything on this thing should be premium. It just should. The legs, this table, I know I'm nitpicking here and I'm just pointing out things that kind of took me by surprise when I got the saw because I thought these things were like the bee's knees, you know, the redneck's back road. I just didn't expect this to be wood. But I've never watched anybody put one together until I knew I was getting this. So when you turn it on, it's gonna go through some self checks and let you know that, it, that the safety feature is ready. If anything is wrong, those lights are gonna change colors, read your manual. You can actually pull this, turn it off, pull this piece out and take it with you. Everything to adjust the height of the blades right here, this is a metal handle. This is metal, this is plastic that you tighten down and so that it won't move. And then on the right side is the angle adjustment of your blade. You can go from zero to 45. Everything moves extremely smooth, works extremely well. One of the things I, I don't know, it's kind of cheesy, but I always thought was really cool design of saw stop is how their throat plates work. The way it locks in there, it's just, it's just cool. I don't know what else to say. I just, I think it's neat. Now, of course this is cast iron, so it will rust. I use Bow Shield T9. I've got a whole video on this stuff. It's a rust and corrosion, but it puts like a film on there, like a, a slickety film. Inside the throat plate is where you change the blades, all that good stuff. Uh, it comes with two wrenches to change the blades. Fairly simple, one on one side, one on the other. Comes with a riving knife. Right there is the brake or the safety feature. To get that off, you just take the riving knife out. There's a little red flip switch here. You pull that out, the brake comes right off, and then you can replace it or 
In my case, I had to use it with a dado stack. I bought a dado cartridge just for that specific purpose and I was able to swip them out easily. You can also adjust them. There's a bolt on one side. I don't have proper dust collection yet, but for now I've been using my shop vac and 95% of the dust comes out of it. So it does pretty well with dust collection. Hey, if you like this video and you want to see how far I've actually come in this journey, you can click that box right there. It's going to take you to the Delta table saw review I did a few years ago. And if you like more tool reviews, you can click that box right there. Thank you for watching.